and welcome back to yet another exciting week of the Lazy Money Game. In this week's episode, we're going to look close at the latest update from Revolut, and afterwards, I will give an update on my portfolio, where you can clearly see that there have been some changes within the week. So let's immediately go to the Revolut webpage. Since within this week, I have received an email from Revolut saying that they will now be launching Revolut Bank in Denmark. So what does this mean for me? Well, basically, it means that Revolut will now be covered under the Danish Inskyder Garantie Ordning, meaning that you will be covered for up to 100,000 euros that you hold in cash within the bank, which was a huge disadvantage previously that you were not insured for the cash that you were holding at Revolut, even though it was held at separate accounts. So I am, of course, quite happy to receive these news. Just keep in mind that you need to do the update in the app yourself in order to get this insurance. And is there something else which has changed? Well, then Revolut is really providing the answer here. If you want the short answer, more security now and more innovative products later. So the natural question to ask now is, of course, will this influence my use of Revolut? Well, I still plan to discontinue my stock trading on Revolut, meaning selling my stocks and moving the majority of my cash. However, due to this new guarantee that I will have for the cash, well, then I'm actually leaning towards keeping some cash on Revolut since I've actually really gotten used to using that card for day-to-day -day business. So I think that is what I'm going to do, meaning when my metal subscription will expire, I won't renew it. I will simply just use the standard user, at least for some time, and see how this all pans out. So will this affect your use of Revolut? Will you, as me, be leaning more towards keeping some cash since you can now be insured, at least if you are living in Denmark as well? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Now, if we then turn to my portfolio, then the first thing we immediately notice is that there's a green circle for this week's episode. The second thing you can notice immediately is that now there's a cost of cash and there's a value of the cash meaning that I have actually been selling some shares. So if we go to the history sheet here, you can see that I have sold my shares in Wells Fargo and I have sold my shares in Simon Property Group. And the amount I have in cash in my portfolio is exactly equivalent to the proceeds that I got from my sell of Simon Property Group, meaning all the money that I have received from my sale of Wells Fargo, I have actually already reinvested into the portfolio. So if you scroll up here, then you will notice a new name, namely C, which is the ticker code for Citigroup. So I have replaced one bank stock with another bank stock. So before we dive further into the details with the purchase of Citigroup, let me just turn your attention into the portfolio values tab. As you can see, the portfolio has increased in value, but perhaps more remarkably is now we have had six weeks in a row where the portfolio has increased in value. So a very natural or normal thing for people to be doing at this time would say, whatever I touch, turn into gold. And this is where you have to remind yourself about this is just short term. And that is why it is so crucial that you have a graph like this to remind yourself about being humble because just go back to 2020 and there you can clearly see that you can also have a lot of weeks in a row where your portfolio is just falling in value. So just short term market fluctuations, nothing to see, just continue doing what you are doing. So in my case, that will be continue to focus on making a passive stream of income through dividends. So what is then more natural than to go and take a closer look at the dividends tab? And this has also been quite a remarkable week since I have received a little more than $115 in dividends from Merck. So already on $274 in dividends within the first two weeks of 2020. A truly amazing start to the year. So this has truly been an amazing start to the year and it actually becomes even better if you go and Google the S&P 500 and look at the last month's performance since the S&P 500 is actually down in value when my portfolio is up in value. And this is due to the fact that I don't have any tax stocks. So let me try and share another valuable link. Because if we go to Finvis, then you can go to Maps and S&P 500, and then you can choose 
the performance you want to look at if you want to have one day a week a month or however long you want to go back because here you can see how each individual company has been performing and here it becomes quite clear that microsoft apple google amazon a lot of these big tech stocks are down in value and they have a huge part of the value of the s p 500 hence since i don't own any of those that means that i am capable of performing better at least for the time being when they are falling in value and let me just emphasize once again just because i have beaten the s p 500 for a month you shouldn't pay any attention to that because that is simply too short of a time period to consider i really like this quote from warren buffett saying that it is far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than it is to buy a fair company at a wonderful price so even though i truly admire that quote from warren buffett i still believe that there is such a thing as too high of a valuation for wonderful businesses and that is the reason why i haven't bought into either microsoft apple google or amazon simply due to the fact that i believe that the valuation currently is not justified by the fundamentals of the business because i try to remind myself of the words of benjamin graham which i have been talking about in a previous episode saying that as the stock price increase the stock becomes more risky not less but where you draw the line between paying too much for a wonderful business and paying a fair price for the wonderful business that is of course the question and that answer varies a lot from person to person depending on your risk preference and also how you have done your analysis and this is where the evaluations of businesses become part science and part art or as benjamin graham is so famously quoting for saying in security analysis it is quite possible to decide by inspection that a woman is old enough to vote without knowing her age or that a man is heavier than he should be without knowing his exact weight so why was it wells fargo and simon property group that i decided to sell within this week well there's not really a good explanation besides the fact that I had earned money on those two companies and at least for me it is easier to sell at a profit than at a loss and I'm still trying to move away from Revolut so that was why I decided to sell those it was completely coincidentally that I decided to sell Simon Property Group before Friday where they fell more than 4% so there I was just lucky then of course you could say that it was unlucky for me that I decided to sell Wells Fargo before Friday where they came out with a new quarterly result where they actually increased quite a lot in value a little more than 3% and at the same time you saw that Citigroup actually felt in value on that particular day. That is simply just market fluctuations so there's nothing particularly interesting I can tell about that. So a more interesting question to try and answer is of course why did I decide to invest into Citigroup well if you look to my portfolio here I have a little less than 15% in the financial services and I would really like to keep my exposure to the financial services since this is an industry that will benefit from rate hikes which we are expected to see at least in the United States based on the latest announcements from Jerome Powell and then the next question you might ask why Citigroup over Bank of America or JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs well if you look to the PE ratio of Citigroup then they are trading currently at a PE ratio below 9 if we then look at Bank of America then it's a little below 14 JP Morgan is 14 and a half you can see Wells Fargo was close to 15 so I think that I actually get a better offer on Citigroup if we are just looking at the PE ratio. Obviously, you need to look into more factors than this. So let's try and do that as well. If we instead go to macro trends and look at Citigroup, if we then go to pricing ratios and then price to book, so we can see currently Citigroup is trading below 0.7 on their price to book, meaning this indicates that the book value per share is actually more 
than what you are currently paying. Meaning if you were to liquidate the entire company, it would be worth more than what its shares are currently selling for. So this is definitely something that you want to look for when you are trying to buy banks. It's not the same as you are guaranteed a profit, but it definitely helps put the odds in your favor. And if we are to compare the price to book ratios for Citigroup, if we for instance compare it to Bank of America, currently you can see it is at 1.45. And if you go back to March 2020, you could see that you would actually be capable of buying it at the same price to book ratio at which you are currently buying Citibank for. And look how that has turned out. If we then turn to JP Morgan, for instance, then you can see here that the price to book ratio is 1.61. So actually even higher than what we just saw for Bank of America. And you were actually capable of buying it just below book value when the market was at the lowest in 2020. So this indicates when you are buying banks, try to search for them when you can buy below book value of one. So why is Citigroup selling at such a low price compared to the other banks? Well, if we go to the revenue and profits tab, then we can see for the last three years, Citigroup has had a decline in their revenue. And this could very well be me making the mistake, if you look to the quote from Buffett, that I'm currently trying to buy a fair company at a wonderful price instead of buying a wonderful company at a fair price. And I truly admit this could be the case in this particular situation. But I believe that I'm buying with a margin of safety in the case of Citigroup. And I don't really see that there is a margin of safety if I were to buy Bank of America or JP Morgan at the current prices. So that is why I have chosen to go with Citigroup instead. Since I want to keep my exposure towards the financial services, and I don't really think that I can buy with a margin of safety, towards the other banks. There might be other banks out there which I simply haven't found where I could have done a better purchase. But based on the research which I have done, I think this actually fit into my portfolio. I'm not saying that you should buy it. Now I have at least tried to lay out my intentions for why I'm doing what I'm doing. So if you're new to this channel or new to investing in general and you don't really know what a PE ratio is, then perhaps that would be a good next video to watch. So you can just click at the link which will come at the end of this video to see more. And this actually sums it up for yet another exciting week of the Lazy Money Game. So if you have enjoyed the content, then please consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel a lot. And until I see you next time, bye.